Now we will discuss the examples of thermal expansion. In our childhood, in most of the quiz programs, the, uh, the quiz master used to ask one question that what is the reason to lift the gap between the two railway tracks. This is one of the big example or best example to understand the concept of thermal expansion. We know that these railway tracks are made up of metals, steel, iron and alloys. Because if it is perfectly iron, there may be a baking stress supply or perfectly steel, it may be caused. For that purpose, they will all use the alloys which you which uh, were useful to be for the long time. So, the gap between the railway tracks is left or is vacant based on the concept of expansions. So, the railway track design. Suppose this is one track which is on the parallel side. This is also one more. So the reason to leave the gap between these two. Okay, this is the track width. There are the wheels of the train which can move on. What is the reason behind the gap between the tracks? Only reason is to control the expansion. Automatically in summer days and in winter days, they will have some expansion coefficient and compression coefficient. The expansion coefficient is such like this. If it expands in summer, okay, this gap is based on this expansion coefficient. Let us suppose in the previous problem we have discussed that uh, Nickel's expansion coefficient is some 13 into 10 to the power of minus 6 per degree Celsius. Means uh, if uh, temperature rises by 1 degree, the nickel expands to 13 micrometers. Such like the iron has one coefficient of expansion, nickel has another coefficient of expansion. So such like if the railway tracks are uh, constructed with the iron and steel alloy, so they will leave the gap based on their uh, expansion coefficient. So such that if expansion took place in the summer season, they both will come close. That's it. If not, means previously this gap was not maintained under the construction of the railway track, these two tracks or these two slabs will overlap on each other that causes to bending and breaking of the tracks. So that's why this railway track designing is based on the thermal expansion. Second one, in olden days from 1970s and 1980s and 1990s before the inventions of the optical fiber technology for the telecommunication purpose, the Telephone signals are sent through a cable which was hanged between the two poles. But the wires are fixed with some looseness, not at all with any tensional force. What is the reason this wire is made up of plastic? Internally, there is a metal wire. So automatically in summer days, that metal will expand on the basis of their rate of expansion coefficient. So that's why the stretching will take place Suppose if the stretching is very tight, then the braking will apply. Braking stress will key the play role. So that's why based on the concept of uh, their coefficient of expansion, they will leave some gap and some loosen. They will give some looseness to the wire which is fixed between the two poles for the telecommunication purpose. Nowadays it is not needed because the optical fiber technology was introduced. So that is the revolutionary thought for the telecommunication area. The third example, in olden days or nowadays also, in mostly in the villages, those who are farmers, if they have the bullock cart, so they used to fix one iron wheel onto the wheels of the bullock cart. 
for that purpose they will take a iron wheel which is in the exactly circular shape they will heat it when they heated it means by increasing the temperature so this will expand so this expansion means it will take the expansion like this between this they will try to fit the wheel automatically when the temperature cools down this wheel will fix on the wheel of the bullock cart this wheel was expanded initially when it is cooled down automatically it will fix on the bullock cart so such like that bullock carts once it is designed they will have a lifelong time next example is inverse steel this inverse steel is an alloy of steel and nickel so its expansion coefficient is very less that's why this inverse steel is used to made uh, the beams or railway tracks and the flyover bridges because if once it is expands enormously automatically there will be a breaking stress applied on the bridges or on the railway tracks where the inverse steel was used so its coefficient of linear expansion is very less so it may be won't that much difficulty or difference while the temperature increases so like this these small concepts what we are discussing in our daily life are the best examples for the thermal expansions the next concept is thermal stress due to thermal expansion we know the general definition of the stress the general definition or the formula for the stress is force by area the stress is almost similar to the pressure applied on the body the units and dimensions are same with as pressure but here it is stress this stress is under the influence of mechanical force but the title of the point is thermal stress means stress due to the change in the temperature let us take a body of finite width finite length and finite height nothing but the finite dimensions like this we know that l b and h are finite now some amount of the temperature was applied to the body at any one side let us suppose this body if it is a ice cube we know that the size will decrease and the volume will expand so after applying the heat or after increasing the temperature this body almost will become like this let us suppose we should assume a picture like this so what happened the heat energy what we applied is done some work to deform the body this deformation is always normal to the applied direction of the body so therefore we can write that stress is equal to force by area where the thermal stress is always normal to the original dimensions of the body that's for if i normal force by area we know that the change in the length by original length is nothing but the strain strain is equal to delta l by l but with the previous examples what we have discussed about the expansion coefficients we can write delta l by l is equal to alpha into delta t 
So, Young's modulus is equal to longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. So, what is the longitudinal stress? Nothing but the normal force by area, F by A. What is the longitudinal strain? Delta L by L. But we know that delta L by L is equal to alpha delta T. Therefore, Young's modulus is equal to F by A by alpha delta T. That is equal to F by A alpha delta T. So, from this alpha is equal to F by A y delta T, where y is equal to Young's modulus. We can write F by A is also like a pressure, therefore P by Y delta T also we can write. So, like this we can uh, simply discuss the thermal stress. Now, we will discuss a numerical which is based on the concept. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.